What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome back to another video. Earlier today, Bungie released part three of their Into the Delight developer live stream and gave us a lot of details on what's to come next week. However, in this video, I will be taking all that information that they gave us and compacting it into a smaller video so you guys don't have to watch the entire hour plus stream for the information. Spoiler alert, if you don't know anything about Into the Light and you want to go into the new content blind, then please leave this video now. I'll go ahead and give you seven seconds. If you're still here, welcome. Also, if you wanna see a few other videos giving you details on everything else coming to Destiny 2 Into the Light, I will put a video at the top right of the screen right now, as well as at the end of this video, so you guys don't miss out on any information. But before we continue on with the video, this video is brought to you by Hyper Controllers. They are the first company to ever put Hall Effect thumbsticks inside a PS5 controller, which means no stick drift. You can customize your own controller or shop for a pre-made one. You can customize a controller for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC with custom shells, extra paddles or buttons with a remappable chip, Hall Effect sensors, mouse click bumpers and triggers, and much more. Hyper Controllers offers a one year warranty on all of their controllers. You can check them out by going to hypercontrollers.com and you can use promo code RXRP to save 5% off your order. So for starters, we are getting two, yes, two reprised exotic missions, which means two exotic missions from Destiny 1. Those exotic missions are the Whisper, which gives you a craftable version of Whisper of the Worm. And the second exotic mission is Zero Hour, which gives you a craftable version of Outbreak Perfected. Then in PVP, we have three new competitive maps coming to Into the Light. Let's go over the exotic missions first. The first exotic mission is the Whisper. If you don't remember, the Whisper mission was on IO in D1, but I don't think we'll be going to return to IO when the mission actually comes back. And I feel like both of these missions will just show up in the Legends destination on our destination screen. According to Bungie, there have been a few things that have changed in the Whisper mission from its original D1 counterpart. All the secrets, all the chests, and all the surprise locations have been moved. The boss fight is a little bit different as well. In order to start the mission, we'll actually be talking to Eris Morn, so there is no more waiting for the specific public event to trigger in order to start the mission like it was back in D1. As for the craftable version of the Whisper, we'll be able to change all of the barrels but we only get four different magazine options, which are Accurized Rounds, Flared Magwell, Alloy Magazine, and Steady Rounds. For the traits, we'll be getting Mulligan, Fill Prep, No Distractions, and Enlighten Action. Whisper of the Worm will still get its personalized trait, Whispered Breathing, which is pretty much box breathing. We'll be getting four different stock options, which are Fitted Stock, Short Action Stock, Composite Stock, and Hand Laid Stock. There will also be an ammo reserves buff going from 18 to 24. However, as far as the rewards go in the Whisper mission, besides actually getting the craftable version of the Whisper of the Worm, we will also be getting an updated exotic ship, which is still named A Thousand Wings, but it will have a new look to it. Unfortunately, Bungie didn't actually show us what these exotic ships for both missions actually look like. If you have the older version of A Thousand Wings, like I do, then you got a big flex because the old version will not be obtainable again in the reprised exotic missions. And finally, the Whisper exotic mission will be available next week starting on April 9th when Into the Light actually launches. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the second exotic mission, Zero Hour. This is the mission that we will be getting for the Craftable Outbreak Perfected. Most importantly, we'll be going back to the D1 Tower for the start of this mission. And that's exciting all on its own. This exotic mission will have a few more different types of enemies that weren't in the mission back in D1, like Briggs. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor is back. And if you don't know who or what Trevor is, let's just say Trevor brings nightmares to your home. All I have to say to the new guardians experiencing this exotic mission for the first time, when it comes to Trevor, run, don't hide, just run. <laughs> to all of my veteran D2 players out there, please be kind to your friends and slowly introduce them to Trevor. Believe it or not, Trevor actually is an acronym that was picked by the community at GuardianCon some ways back. 
The official name for Trevor is Tame Relax Triple Vac Roommate. The normal version of this mission will give you 40 minutes to actually complete it, but the legend version, which will contain most of the quests, secrets, and content, will only give you 20 minutes to complete it. Speaking of the secrets in the D1 version of Zero Hour, they were once key cards that unlocked some of the secrets. That is no longer a thing in the reprised versions. The key cards have been replaced with another quote unquote secret system, but Bungie didn't actually tell us what that was and wants us to figure that out ourselves. The boss fight has changed and Bungie actually wants us to figure that out as well. As for the craftable version of Outbreak Perfected, We'll be getting all of the barrel options, and for the magazine, we'll be able to craft Accurized Rounds, Alloy Magazine, Flared Magwell, Steady Rounds, Appended Mag, Tactical Mag, and Extended Mag. So almost all of the magazine options, but not quite all of them. For the traits, we actually have the Reprised Outlaw, Rapid Hit, Rewind Rounds, and Head Seeker. For PvP, most likely you're gonna be going for Head Seeker. And for PvE, probably Outlaw, Rapid Hit, or Rewind Rounds. The Outbreak Perfected still comes with its personalized trait, Parasitism, which this weapon does more damage to enemies based on the number of SIVA nanites that attach to them. And lastly, the stock options on this weapon are Fitted Stock, Short Action Stock, Composite Stock, and Hand Laid Stock. As I said before, Bungie did not show us what the exotic ships look like, but the new exotic ship for Zero Hour will be inspired by the Outbreak Perfected. So expect to see a SIVA-like ship for that mission. This exotic quest will be released in May, 2024. Now, given that these weapons have already been released, just not their craftable versions, if you already have the catalyst for each of these exotic weapons that you get from these missions, then once you get the craftable version, you can just equip the catalyst onto them. If not, then you actually need to play the legend version of the exotic missions to actually obtain the catalyst. As for their intrinsic perks that you can actually slot in in the very first slot, there will be a mini quest line to complete each exotic mission that spans over three weeks. Any of the current ornaments that you have unlocked will also be applied to the craftable versions of these weapons so you do not have to repurchase them. Next, we will be getting three PVP maps focused for the competitive scene. These maps will also be available in any 3v3 PVP game modes, but these maps will have a few tweaks to their modifiers. The first map that we will be getting is called Eventide Labs. It is a long forgotten human colony outpost on Europa that is now a refueling station for Aramis's catch based on a fallen and human environment. This map has so many sight lines in and out of areas and the team has definitely made an amazing map when it comes to Eventide Labs. The next map is called Cyrus Plaza, and it's a shopping slash entertainment center for the Exos on Niamuna with a big pit in the middle of the map. This map is actually big in a vertical aspect and has multiple levels with tons of rooms to go in and out of. I'm not gonna lie, it looks beautiful.
The final PvP map is called Dissonance and is located in the Essence Pyramid Ship, which is in Earth's orbit. This map actually overlooks the Traveler and gives you that Ruder Nightmares kind of vibe to it. When Bungie actually shown this map, it had showcased that there were four different special ammo spawn locations and only one heavy ammo location. So that is everything coming as of next week. But on other news, Pantheon, and I've actually said it on this um, channel for a little bit now, is a new raid oriented or more so raid boss gauntlet starting on April 30th. In this new activity, we will be able to fight raid bosses and weekly challenges with escalated difficulties and rewards. But more information on Pantheon will be released in future coming twids. Starting on April 9th, which is next week, we can start working on a new seal for the new title, Brave. Also on April 9th, with Into the Light, we'll be getting three new features with Destiny 2. The first being, Join the Front Lines, where new players can actually skip the New Light campaign with a New Light kit that gives you your subclass of your choice of the three main Light subclasses. So, Void, Solar, or Arc. But I'm not sure if this will actually give you the incomplete subclass or not. I guess we'll just have to either make a new account or have somebody new come and play with us in order to get the ins and out of that. The next feature, and we've been asking for it for about 10 years, is that we will be able to change the way our character looks underneath their helmet. So yes, customization options for your body, face, hair, and markings just like if you were making a new character, but we'll be able to change our current character. Not sure if Bungie actually updated all of the cosmetics on this feature, but once again, we're gonna have to wait and see next week. And the last new feature Bungie is giving all guardians is a second name change token. So you'll be able to change your name once again, if you previously had it changed or you still have it as something that you want to change you don't have to use your tokens. You can actually keep them. I personally haven't used mine yet, so I still have one in reserve. For a few final notes, next week, the Destiny 2 developer team will be back with another live stream, but this one is for the final shape. And they'll be streaming it, and I will be as well. And if you guys wanna watch it with me, then you can by going to twitch.tv forward slash reckless XRP. There will also be Twitch drops active for this, and if you watch at least 15 minutes of it, you will be awarded with a new emblem, so stay tuned for that. So, what do you guys think of the exotic missions and the three new PvP maps coming to D2? I'm actually excited for it. I really can't wait to jump into Onslaught, getting those exclusive limited edition weapons, playing the Whisper and Zero Hour missions again, and definitely the PvP maps. I'm not gonna lie, I really think all three of them look amazing. But we'll see how much I like them when I actually get to play inside them next week come April 9th. So that is an entire hour of live stream content giving you guys in a short compressed time. Let me know what you guys think about everything we went over in this video down in the comment section below. And what do you guys like or do not like about the new content coming to Destiny 2? And that my friends brings us to the end. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you. Watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go. Go, 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 go.